Okay, I've got a question that's come in about standardization of data and standardization of data in past. Now first of all let's distinguish standardization standardization and normalization. So what I've got up here showing at the moment is the formula that I would use in transform evaluate expression to normalize the environmental data. If I do that you can see the data have been changed here. There are some positives and some negatives. Normalization means transform the variable so that the variable has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. So if I calculate the mean for each of these variables it's going to be 0 and the standard deviation and the variance will be 1. That is usually done when the variables are different sorts of things as in this case depth in meters, sediment particle size in microns, nutrients and hydrocarbons in concentrations. Standardization is a different thing and standardization might be done to the biological data. So here in this simulated data I have up to 50 species and I have the abundance of each species. Now because these are simulated data I know that each sample is of the same size, that is it's the same physical size. I'm sampling the same amount, the same quantity, be it area or volume, the same amount of the environment. What that means is that these numbers for say crustacean 1 for the different samples are directly comparable they are estimates of absolute abundance rather than relative abundance. So uh, 733 here is nearly twice, one and a half times the 492 there. It is reasonable to make those comparisons across the samples because the size of the sample has been standardized. Now in situations where that's not the case it may not be reasonable to directly compare the numbers, the absolute abundance across the samples. I may be looking instead at relative abundance. A common situation for that is something like a plankton tow where the net is dragged through the water for a period of time and the organisms caught in the net are identified and counted. If I don't standardize the amount of water that goes through the net then I have relative rather than absolute abundances. And in those cases what I want to do here is compare the percentage composition for each sample that is the relative abundances rather than the absolute abundances. Now is it essential to standardize before doing any particular analysis? This doesn't depend usually on the analysis but on the data. So if the data are absolute abundances I don't need to standardize. I can't think of any normal situations where I would need to standard where I would need to standardize, emphasize need. Um, if however I don't know that the samples are of the same size then it is not reasonable to regard these as absolute abundances. They should be regarded as relative abundances and I should look at differences in percent composition. Now I'll come back to how I do that in past in a moment. Uh, in introducing this I emphasize the word need. So if these are absolute abundances and the sample size is standardized, sorry the, the sample size is known and is known to be the same, I do not normally need to standardize these abundances here. If however 
If however I wanted to simply focus on percent composition rather than absolute abundance then of course again I can standardize and then this will just focus on the percent composition rather than the actual abundance. So there are situations where I may not need to standardize but I want to standardize because I want to focus on composition, percentage composition rather than on absolute abundance. Now how do I do, go about doing that in past? Well it is actually quite easy. If I want to standardize all of these samples now you can see in this set of data I've got here I have already worked out the total number of individuals so 25,519 is the sum of all of the counts of the species in that particular sample so standardizing getting percent composition is a matter of going 100 times 492 over 25519 177 over 25519 times 100 and I could do that using a evaluate expression but in past these functions refer to the columns so the only easy way to do that would be to transpose the matrix take this data into Excel or use some other option. Fortunately PAST has an easier option transform row percentages and that's done. Now I have taken these data out into Excel and confirmed that these are the actual percentages for each row. So this is a case where the authors of PAST have done some careful thinking about the sorts of things you might commonly need to do and put a function in the program that does that for you directly. Uh, if the, you think these numbers look rather small 1.93, 0.69 uh, remember there are about 50 species here um, so you would expect each species if they're more or less in similar abundance to be somewhere between 1 and 2 percent of the total sample. So if you need to standardize it's an easy thing to do in past.